This is way too valuable for me not to share it with you. Most couples are on top of the world until they hit one financial struggle after another financial struggle after another. In fact, 48% of American couples who live together say they argue about money, like on a consistent basis, and this includes married couples. Most of these arguments happen because usually one of the people spends too much while the other spends too little and is seen as cheap. The other arguments happen because they can't seem to agree on how to split the bills, not to mention debt. So what if that were you and a random couple walked up to you who you haven't even met before and they gave you a budgeting system that solves those exact issues, then proceeded to show you their results. And by results, I mean one of their emergency funds that has over $20,000 in it. Now you're probably thinking that would never happen, but in a strange way, it kind of is right now. So I got this exact budgeting method from this very financially successful couple, and this is the most ingenious thing I've ever seen, and I just wanted to share it with you guys. This is literally the blueprint of how to manage money in marriage, or as a couple who lives together, whatever the case is. Very specific issues that most couples that live together have to go through financially, and that is not knowing what is mine, yours, or ours, two is debt, and three is just different spending personalities. One is frugal and one is spending too much, basically. With that said, this system has three specific parts and we're about to break it down right now. As a matter of fact, I'm about to rip this miner off and we're about to draw on this thing. Let's get started. All right, so this is part one. This is the simple joint account with all their bills within this. So if we look right here, this is just a general, these are very rough numbers as far as what the average is for each bill within my area. So don't mind that. Uh, you could just suit it to whatever your bills are. But I'm going to just make a note right here that this all equals out to about $3,030 per month. So obviously the couple needs to maintain more than this together if they're going to sustain this. Now the way this is going to work is the one who is most financially responsible is going to manage this. They're going to hold the debit card that gives them access to this account. That's how it's going to work. All right, so we're moving up top. Let's say spouse number one makes $20 an hour and spouse number two makes $17 an hour. And that means just very rough. Spouse one is going to bring home about $3,000 a month and spouse two is going to bring home about $2,500 a month. So together they're going to bring home about $5,500 a month if this thing lets me draw it. Okay, so $5,500 a month, boom. So obviously that's going to more than cover this 30-30. Okay, so that means together they bring home about $66,000 per year, which, you know, that's more than the national average. Let's, let's go ahead and acknowledge that. So most of these are just ballpark numbers, just kind of averaging out what the norm is for my area, but we have two specific areas where we don't really know what they are because they're kind of up to you, but I'm going to explain what these mean. So we have a uh, section called miscellaneous, which you're probably questioning, and entertainment. What do these two mean? Miscellaneous things, to me, are necessities that aren't needed consistently. Does that make sense? Miscellaneous is going to be stuff like clothing, household items that break. You might need a new toaster, or you might need a new water heater, or you might need something that's you don't normally have to replace, but every now and then you're going to have to replace, right? So that's what miscellaneous is. And then we have entertainment. Entertainment is stuff like date nights, going out to amusement parks, going out to the movies, going out to, you know, to eat, going out for drinks, going out to comedy clubs or whatever the case, whatever you guys do, that's what entertainment is. And it might look like it's high, but I will explain later in the video exactly why it's not as high as you think it is. It could be more. So that's the first portion. Spouse one and spouse two make $5,500 a month. All right, so now it's up to this couple to figure out how they're going to go from 5,500 and budget that so that it fits a 30-30 budget. So the person who actually showed me this budgeting system said that her husband is actually more financially responsible, so he is actually managing this. That means on date nights, he's the one who holds the card that is their joint account. Now, some of you are probably thinking, why are they doing date nights in their joint account? Shouldn't it just be coming from one or the other's account? Well, I'm about to explain that. So, part two of this, spouse number one has his bank account, spouse number two has her bank account, or vice versa, whichever one. Now, their banks each have a checking and a savings account, very important, 
very important. And then within this, they have their own things that they're paying for. For example, their debt, their gifts to one another, their wants. So, so let's say spouse wants a new motorcycle or let's say he wants to get a haircut or let's say he wants to get a dog okay that comes out of his expenses because they're his wants make sense and then also investments so again spouse number two she pays her own debt she pays for the gifts that she gets for her husband or for her kids and then she pays for her wants so if she wants to get her nails done or her hair done then we have investments, okay? So that's all the things that both of them would be paying for. Now, one of them might be in more debt than the other one is, okay? So if if spouse number one decides he has an extra $500 at the end of the month to help his wife with, then he can send that to her and it can help her pay her debt. And that's awesome. But instead of combining debt and putting it into this big joint account, no, they pay, he pays his own debt, she pays her own debt. And I thought that was just so genius. And some people might not agree with it. And you can tailor this to however you want to. But bottom line is, this is smart thinking. It individualizes the things that, the, you know, that one person is struggling with. Because let's say they did put debt, we'll write it down here. Let's say they did put debt in this category, and let's say both of them in total were $65,000 in debt, and that's pretty normal for most couples, I might add. But then that means both of them have to put so much more money in their, in their fund. They have to put so much more money in their joint account, right? And it means that they both have to struggle to get this debt down. And so what if they're paying off this debt and they're throwing all this money at it, and then they split up. That gets complicated fast, right? And this is also a money management technique because, again, this also, this joint account, this purple here, it has, this purple here, it has its own checking and savings account. So that's the basic portion of this, and that's just really the ideology and money mindset behind it, but we're about to dig in a little deeper. So clearly, the first step was to already have all their bills broken down, knowing how much they have to pay per month, and then understanding how much they make a month. But we're talking about after taxes, okay? This is the important part, after taxes, because they have to be 100% real with themselves as far as how much they make a month. This is the regular fund for their bills. All their other stuff goes to their own individual bank accounts like we just discussed. So if we want to turn this into an emergency fund, which is three to six months worth of expenses, which would mean we would literally have to go ahead and multiply this 30, 30 by, we'll, we'll multiply it by six because you don't want to, you never know what's gonna happen, right? So we're gonna multiply this 30, 30 by six. So that's 18, 18, <laughs> I should have known that. All right, so emergency fund go is 18, 18, right? So that's where we're at. So that's our emergency fund goal. So that means we have to do a little bit of math between spouse one and spouse two, because again, one of the biggest problems with marriage is how do we split the bills? Who pays for what? Well, you make more than I do. So I think that we're, we're gonna answer all of those questions right now. So when you look at 5,500 minus 3030, that's how much they're gonna have left over, $2,470. That's how much money they're gonna have left over as a couple to do whatever they have to do. With that said, if they just do half of their paycheck within this, it's not gonna to equate to that 3030, not quite yet. So we're gonna to have to figure out who puts more money in there. Now, obviously he makes more, but we shouldn't look at who makes more. We should look at, the bills on this side. Let's say he has debt, right? Let's say he has student loan debt. Let's say they're a 26 year old couple and there's student loan debt involved on his end, but not on her end. So let's say he, he only has to pay $200 per month, but nonetheless it is still debt, right? And let's say he doesn't, they don't buy each other gifts very often. They just got married. They've got to save, obviously. But let's say he, he has wants. Let's say he wants to cut his hair. Let's say that costs $30 because to be real, it kind of does cost $30. And let's say those are the only two things. Let's say he's not investing right now. 
he's not buying gifts right now and he's not investing. So he's literally just paying debt and he's paying for haircut so it can look presentable for work, right? So that's 230 that he absolutely has to spend every single month, right? So then let's say something that she does every month is gets her hair done. Let's say that costs $70. Let's say she also wants to get her nails done. Hmm, well, that's another 55 at least. I'm, I'm being modest here, guys. I really am. And let's say that something she wants to do, since she has no debt, she wants to invest $100 in the stock market every single month. So this is part three, actually creating the emergency fund and deciding how much money goes into the joint account per person. Okay. So as we talked about before, he's paying his $200 and he's paying his $30 for his haircut and this is for his debt and for his haircut. And then she's absolutely paying $225 per month between her getting her hair done, getting her nails done, and also investing $100 in the stock market. So that's how you determine who's going to pay more. So obviously this guy is going to pay more. Now, is he going to be broke at the end of the month? No because she's still gonna put a good portion in. So let's say that she puts in half of her earnings. All right, so let's say she has 1250 going in there every single month because that's the number they agreed upon, mind you. And let's say he's like, okay, I will pay the rest, no big deal, because at the end of the day, why not? And this, by the way, is barely more than half of his monthly wages. So basically spouse number two is paying 50% and spouse number one is paying 60% of their earnings. And that's fair being that he does make more and he's spending about the same as what she's spending per month on himself. So with that said, they're, they're sitting pretty good. So if we move up to a clean area right here, right, you'll see that spouse one, spouse two, spouse one spends 1780 per month. Spouse spends twelve fifty per month. So when you consider that he makes three thousand, and when you consider that she makes twenty five hundred, she's left with twelve fifty per month. Now keep in mind we have not taken out what they spend on themselves yet, right? So, ah, uh, keyboard, no, I don't want you. Okay, so <laughs> this guy has 1220 left. So it evens out this way, and that's what makes it so genius because this is literally just me ballparking numbers, throwing numbers out there and just seeing how it works live, right? So they actually end up having around the same amount of money per month. Of course, he's going to have a little less because he's going to pay his debt. So when you subtract his debt, I think he pays 230 per month and she pays 225 per month on average, you know what I'm saying? Apparently I can't do math without a calculator. So he's left with 990 per month and she is left with 1025. You know what I'm saying? So that that's how it works. That's pretty much the gist of how it works. Now that we know how much they have, you know, extra per month. So you could consider these right here. They're non-negotiables that they absolutely want to make sure that they have money for every single month. And with that said, this guy has $990 at the end of the month. So he could, no kidding, put 500 in his checking account. 200 in the savings account and just just for wanting to do it he can put an additional $290 in that joint account in that joint savings account which is going to snowball into an emergency fund if you haven't caught on to that yet and she could essentially do the same thing let's say spouse number two wants to go ahead and put a good 400 in her checking because she doesn't spend money like that anyways on her own car because they have their joint account. But then let's say she wants to stack up her savings a little bit. So she actually puts 400 in there as well. And keep in mind, guys, they do this 
every single month. And let's say and let's say she puts 225 in the joint account as well. Now, here is the kicker. Remember in the beginning when I said that these two expenses or stuff that isn't that aren't really set, they're not really fixed, they're just kind of numbers that are thrown out there. The entertainment one is actually pretty accurate, but you can always cut back on miscellaneous and entertainment expenses. And if you do, and if you do this correctly and you actually set up your joint account to where you're expecting 30-30 to go out of every single month at the very most, you're going to see that typically this couple, let's just throw out a number, is only going to spend about, let's say, $2,800, which means they're typically going to have an extra $230 per month. So you mean to tell me that you're saving, you're put, so you mean to tell me spouse number one is putting 290 in the account every single month, and then spouse number two is putting $225 in there every month, and you're telling me that they're also saving an additional 230 per month? Let's add that up. That means together, on average now, because obviously there's going to be some fluctuations, but on average, they're putting in an extra $745 into their joint account. So obviously, the bank account isn't going to look like a bunch of different bills. It's going to look like a big number that is the amount that they have in their joint account. But they are going to expect to see $3,030 taken out of their account every single month or less. Like, worst case scenario is the only time they can expect to see 30-30, right? So that's, let's say they do this for a year. Let's just, you know, 12 months. They already put away $8,940 per year. That is insane. And if they do it for two years, Do you see how this can easily get way beyond 20 grand? And it was so funny because when I was talking to the person who actually told me about this budgeting system for emergency funds and all this stuff, she was like, yeah, this is our emergency fund. It's like 20 grand in there. And I'm like, wow. And she's like, yeah, and this is nothing for us. This is just, you know, six months of expenses. We have other investment accounts and other savings accounts. And basically our emergency funds have emergency funds. And I'm like, that is freaking awesome. More people need to know about this. She knows I have a YouTube channel and I make financial videos. She was like, hey, go ahead and use this if you want to. Go ahead. So here I am. And I think it'll add a lot of value to you guys. So we're going to keep going. The emergency fund goal is 18180 So really, they just got to do it for one more month? Yeah, if they do it for one more month, that's 18625 that's already over the goal. Took them less. I mean, come on. Took them two years and one month to do that. And that's that's if that's if they don't want to put more in. They can say, you know what? Forget my checking account for right now. Let me go ahead and put an extra two hundred down here. And then that number is going to go up. And then let's let's say someone ends up going ahead and getting a raise at work. Oh, please! This number is about to start doubling, tripling. And they can stop whenever they want. So they can stop putting that extra money because at this point it is extra. Because remember, let me enlarge this for you so you can see. Remember, the emergency, or no, not even the emergency fund. But just so we're clear, this is the emergency fund. And this is for regular bills, right? That's also my initials, by the way. But anyways, their checking account. Because they're all because they're automatically putting their money in there every month, it's automatically going to have 30-30 in there anyways. And of course, if they're any if the couple is anything like me, they're going to go ahead and make sure that they round this number up so it's like 3,100 or something because odd numbers make me feel uncomfortable. You know what I'm saying? Well, let's just say they already hit their goal of 18, 18, right? So they already have a checking and a saving, so they could stop right now if they wanted to and say, hey, I have my six months. And then 
they could go up here to their own individual goals. Like he could be like, well, you know what? Now I want to get, you know, 2000 in my savings account or now I want to get 20000 in in my savings account. He can do that because this one's paid for. This one right here? Yeah. This one? Yeah. It's paid for. You know what I'm saying? So if it's paid for, there's no obligation. And the emergency fund is extra anyway. So really, really, he can invest in whatever he wants to. He can buy his wife more gifts now. His debt, he can go full force on his debt without having to worry about any financial repercussions because both of them diligently put their money into it. But the thing is, both of them have to be on the same page, which I think right here, this system, this entire enlarged system, you know, this system is going to get couples to work together. This couple isn't making a ton of money together, but you see how on a relatively average and ordinary wage per year together, they're able, they're able to save this kind of money. And another pro tip I want to really give real quick is when you see this stuff, Remember, I, I I spoke about, you know, their their savings growing and growing and growing. Their emergency fund just growing out of control. So if it does that, so if it does that, that does not mean their bills change. That does not mean that they upgrade. That means that they have to make a decision upon themselves. And I guarantee you one, one of the people in that relationship is going to be like, hey, we're making money or we're saving so much money. Let's move into a bigger house. Let's do this. Let's do that. Don't be too hasty on doing that. That's my advice to you because if you keep these numbers the exact same, but your money goes up and you're able to put more money in the bank account and then you build other streams of income, say through investments or something, y'all are going to have some serious money. A lot of people could follow a great, fantastic system like this and then get comfortable when they start seeing the numbers come in and then revert back to their old ways. I would request that you don't do that. But this, this is the system. I mean, it's very simple, but I've never heard a single person talk about it before. And I've talked to a lot of people about finances and not one time until like a few weeks ago, not one time have I heard anyone speak of something like this. For most couples, they put all their money into a joint account and fail to manage it or fail to put a person in charge of it. This is a great, great method. I appreciate you guys for watching this video. It was a very long video and it just had me scribbling and talking everywhere and trying to figure things out and failing at math for some reason. But I really do thank you for watching this video. And hey, I, I gave this information for absolutely free. And all I ask in return is that you hit the like button, subscribe to me if you like this channel, if you want to come back and see some more of this content. And leave a comment below and share this video to a friend. Share this to somebody who you think it would add value to because there is a severe problem with you know couples and individuals in this world who can't manage money. And this right here, to me, is pure gold. And again, you can tailor this to however you want. You can tailor this to your needs, but this is the framework and this is the money mindset behind this. But thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Reggie Bryant. This channel is all about personal growth and personal finance so that you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.